Do you want your 3D print to not look like a 3D print? Well, here's five ways to reduce layer lines and get that professional look. I think it's fair to say that visually the Achilles heel of FDM 3D printing is the layer lines. In this video, we're going to cover five different techniques for reducing them, or at best case, even making them disappear. I think we need to start by asking what are layer lines? Let's make this really quick because I think most people already know the answer to this. For this video, I've created this simple test piece. It's small, quick to print. It has some vertical and almost vertical walls, but the hardest part is this ellipse here which is gonna make the layer lines visually quite obvious. When we import this into the slicer, it looks very smooth, but as soon as we slice it, we can see that there's lines the whole way around the circumference, and they're particularly obvious in this upper section. And that's because our 3D prints are actually more like 2.5D, built up one flat layer at a time, stacked on top of each other. And this dividing the model into these stacked layers is the reason this software is called a slicer. And here we see the printed result. This is a clean print, but the layer lines are obviously there and particularly evident on those top shallow surfaces, an effect we can call stair stepping. So how do we get rid of this? Our first technique is the most classic and it's post print processing. And by this, I mean printing as usual and then using some sort of putty or filler in combination with hand sanding or perhaps power sanding if you're impatient like me to fill in and then smooth the bridges between the layer lines. There's no denying this is a tried and tested technique and with enough care and attention, the layer lines will disappear and it won't look 3D printed. In the past, I've also covered techniques like using a solvent in vapor smoothing. For instance, acetone with ABS or ASA. And in my case, I use a modified rice cooker with very consistent results. The only problem being the smoother you get it, the more detail you'll lose. There's also proprietary versions of this, like the polisher from Polymaker that uses isopropyl alcohol with their own blend of PLA, which gives pretty similar results to ABS with acetone. Of course, this doesn't warp like ABS, so it's a lot easier to print. I've also explored a technique used in motorsport as well as woodworking called flocking, where you paint on a layer of PVA glue and then coat the object with flock, which is like fine pieces of felt, which unsurprisingly gives the appearance and texture of felt when you're done. The truth is all of these things work, but I just hate doing them. I have zero patience when it comes to sanding, preparing, and spray painting. For me, it lengthens the manufacturing process to the point where I don't feel it's really worth it anymore. The reason I like 3D printing is that it's efficient and repeatable. I can put the time into the CAD, and then me or anyone printing my design on the internet ends up with a near identical object. So let's confine the rest of our tips away from skill in post-processing to things that we can do in the slicer so it's achievable by all. Our first technique is the simplest, and that's to simply change the color of your filament. I picked green for the baseline print because it's pretty average in terms of color. If we put it side by side with a dark gloss or silk filament, we can see that the layer lines are a lot more prominent on it. Simply more contrast between the light and dark areas, which has the effect of exaggerating the layer lines. So instead, let's compare it to gloss white filament. By comparison, their visual impact is greatly diminished. In fact, we can barely see the layer lines on the side of the print. There's just a lot less contrast to help them stand out. I think the ideal color is actually a gray, but a matte one instead of a gloss one that you're seeing here. For example, let's take this mask that was printed with a 0.2 millimeter layer height on an FDM printer. The layer lines aren't very visible until we look up close and we inspect areas with shallow surfaces and where there's big overhangs where the drooping filament makes an obvious blemish. In the past, several people had thought this was a resin print until they picked it up for closer inspection. There is a reason that manufacturers bundle a small spool of white PLA with their 3D printers. It's simply more forgiving for print quality because it hides layer lines and other blemishes. The next easiest change we can make is to switch to a filament that adds texture through speckles or perhaps because it's a composite. Let's compare with our baseline print, one that's printed in Marble Effect PLA. And we can see from the side, the layer lines are practically invisible and we can only see those shallow stair steps on the top. In this case, this is for two reasons. As we previously covered, the filament is quite light and therefore doesn't have as much contrast and the speckles from the Marble Effect are quite distracting to the eye. Don't get me wrong, the print you're seeing here is of very high quality, but the marble filament probably makes it look twice as good as it would with something like a dark gloss filament. 
but even darker filaments can hide the layer lines as long as they have some sort of metallic fleck. The perceived texture does a good job of distracting the eye and making the surface look more uniform. You can get a similar effect with a composite filament, for instance one filled with carbon fibre particles. In this case, if we compare our baseline to the carbon filled filament, it's actually pretty disappointing. Texture has been added, but the texture is so rough that it's catching the light and probably making the layer line stand out more. Nonetheless, I'm leaving it in this guide video, because in the past I've had great success with carbon filled filament. Here we can see carbon filled nylon next to some metallic fleck PLA, and the end result is something that doesn't really look 3D printed, on most of the surfaces at least. Just remember that with composite filaments, those carbon fibres are abrasive, and you need to print them with a hardened nozzle to avoid premature wear. So what about if we add some texture, but with standard filaments, by employing fuzzy skin in our slicer? Fuzzy skin is a feature that originated in Cura, where you can find it in the experimental section. And once we tick it, we have a couple of extra options. It's since been ported to Prusa Slicer and all of its derivatives, including Orca Slicer, which you're seeing here, where it's found in the others section. Once we enable it by selecting an option from the dropdown, we'll have two numerical inputs, more or less the same as Cura. If we slice the model, we can see that the outside does in fact have a fuzzy skin. And instead of having a smooth extrusion, the outside is randomized using these two numbers. The distance is the gap along the perimeter between each variation, and the thickness is how far the fuzzy skin will deviate from the original extrusion. For a nice subtle texture, I like to drop these down to 0.2mm or perhaps 015 That will make the texture seem a little more uniform, but still with a good degree of randomness. And here is the printed result versus our baseline. And I personally think the fuzzy skin does a great job of adding texture, with the only layer lines being the stair stepping still present on the top. Even if we use our less forgiving silk filament, at a glance the layer lines are greatly diminished and the 3D printed look is greatly reduced. Here's an example on a practical print, and we can see the layer lines on the smooth section of this handle, yet the portions that have fuzzy skin applied, I would argue, do not really appear that they've been 3D printed. We're making good progress, but none of our techniques so far do anything to fix that stair stepping on the top surfaces. So let's fix that in an efficient way. Our solution is going to be variable layer height, and this portion of the video was requested by viewer Lee. This is a good example of a model where a regular layer height is fine for 90% of it, but we want a little more detail in one particular portion. Let's start by lowering the layer height for the entire print. After all, really low layer heights is one of the reasons that resin 3D printing has such outstanding detail. Before we do this, at 0.2mm layer height, our baseline model printing time is 9 minutes 20. Let's lower our layer height all the way down to 0.04mm and slice again. The first thing to notice is that the stair stepping on the top layers is almost gone, but our model printing time has jumped up to 39 minutes 43 seconds, and that is 4 times longer. The result, however, is quite spectacular. The layer lines are pretty much eliminated from all but the very top, shallow surface of the print. Looks great, but I never print with this layer height because I simply don't want to wait that long. So instead, let's do this the smart way with variable layer height. We're going to click on our object and then come up to the icon at the top that looks like stacked layers. There's a few things happening with this preview that we need to understand. Firstly, we have a visual representation with these bands as to where the layer lines will be and since we haven't changed anything, it matches the stock 0.2mm. This is also represented down the right hand side, and we can see as we mouse over, it will highlight various parts of the model. The key here is that this layer graph on the right is interactive. We can click with the left mouse button, and we can see in that area that the layer height is reduced. If we hover over the question mark, we can see there's actually quite a few controls that we can use on the right hand bar. For instance, the mouse wheel to expand or contract the area that we're editing, the left button to add detail in that section, or the right mouse button to remove detail and make the layer height more coarse. One aspect I didn't really use was pressing the smooth button to alter the transition between lower and higher layer heights. A higher value will do more smoothing and a lower value will do less smoothing. And if you want to reverse anything, Ctrl Z to undo is your friend. It's nice to have so much control, but for me the best thing about this is using automatic adaptive mode. We can see up the top we have a button for adaptive and a slider to choose between quality and speed. Let's start by moving it all the way to speed and then clicking adaptive. We can see from the preview that most of the model will be printed at 0.28mm layer height. 
yet for these top shallow surfaces, it will drop down to 0.2 and all the way down to 0.8 for the very top. And if we slice, this actually gives us a 7 minute 41 print time, meaning this technique is a great way to save time on a model that you want to print fast but not look terrible on any shallow surfaces. I'm going to reset once more, put the slider all the way to quality and click adaptive once again. We can see that in some sections, the layer height will be 0.28, but it will drop down on the shallow surfaces to as low as 0.08. And when we slice, we get a time of 10 minutes 28 seconds. 0.08 is okay, but we know that we can print at 0.04. So if we come over to our printer settings and click to edit the preset, and then come to the extruder tab, we can see near the top, we have a min and max for our layer heights. Let's say for this print, I don't want it to ever go above 0.2, but I want the finest resolution to be 0.04. I can simply input these numbers here, close the window and click adaptive once more. We can now see that in the coarser sections we have 0.2, but we'll drop all the way down to 0.04 on those top shallow surfaces where we need it the most. I just want to note that even after using the adaptive mode, you can still use mouse clicks on the graph to alter it further. But for this print, I'm going to stick with the automatic result which has a model print time of 18 minutes and 15 seconds. Let's compare our 0.04 millimeter print on the left with our adaptive layer height print on the right. I would suggest this is an excellent compromise. The top shallow layers look just as good, yet we've produced this in less than half the time. I think we've got some real winners here, but there's nothing to stop us from combining these techniques for the best results. How about adaptive layer height with a light colored speckle filament? The version on the right has both of these applied and the layer lines are now very subtle. How about regular filament but reducing the layer lines by combining fuzzy skin with adaptive layer height? Personally, this is my favorite combination as the layer lines are very subtle and I think this would look even better if we had the equivalent of fuzzy skin for the top smooth surfaces. The difference is even more stark if we go back to that silk gray filament. Those top gently curving layers just look so much better than before. I should also mention that basic printer calibration comes before all of this. For instance, this print is done on one printer and the only difference is the white portion has way too much flow rate. So start with the low hanging fruit before you look for the magic bullet. Thank you to Lee for requesting part of this video. Please give this stuff a try and let me know if it's helpful. Thank you so much for watching and until next time, happy layer line less 3D printing. G'day, it's Michael again. If you liked the video, then please click like. If you want to see more content like this in future, click subscribe and make sure you click on the bell to receive every notification. If you really want to support the channel and see exclusive content, become a patron. Visit my Patreon page. See you next time.